Hi guys and welcome to CNG Productions. My name is Paul and in this video I am going to give you a breakdown of the five biggest changes between Walking Dead All Out War and the new Walking Dead Call to Arms. But before we go into that, I want to make sure that the tinfoil hat brigade out there understand that Mantic Games are going to continue to support Walking Dead All Out War even with the release of the new war game Call to Arms. What this will look like is very much going to be faction boxes which contain both sets of cards, Walking Dead All Out War and Walking Dead Call to Arms probably include some new equipment cards as well. The first of those big changes are changes to the threat tracker and the event cards. The threat tracker has been completely removed from the game. Now me personally that was one of my favourite aspects of All Out War. But the reason for this removal is because we've got to look at it in a thematic approach. Walking Dead All Out War was very much based on groups of survivors banding together to survive. Walking Dead Call to Arms means that these groups of survivors have created communities and are now warring against each other. With the removal of the Threat Tracker, it was only natural that the event cards would cease to exist as well, and these have also been removed from Call to Arms. Each scenario now has specific events that take place within it, and are resolved within a specific phase in the game. On the subject of game phases, the second point that we're going to come across is the Strategy Phase. The Strategy Phase is a phase in which you review all of your character cards, and each character will have a value associated with their Strategy Rating. You roll whatever dice is relevant to it and that total pool becomes your strategy points. Strategy points can be spent on character specific traits such as bruisers, marksmen, tacticians, support etc. Or if your character has a specific trait on their card you can spend strategy points to do them. Each faction will also have a pool of strategies that they can choose from to spend these strategy points on which will give the entire crew a buff in its own right. Number 3, the walker phase. The walker phase has become much more important in Walking Dead Call to Arms, just as much as it was important in All Out War. However, now all melee attacks are resolved in the action phase by your characters, which means that there's no melee phase. The walker phase is split up into four sections, kill zones. Kill zones are where you test to see if a walker is within range to engage a, uh, a survivor. Scenario events. At this point, the scenario specific event is resolved. Walkers attack. All walkers now attack whatever they are engaged with. Just to add on to that point, survivors can only defend against walkers at this point as they've already potentially attacked in the previous phase. The final area of the walker phase is something called creating a herd, which brings us on to point number four. Number four is herds. Now, just to make sure I get the correct information across to you guys, I'm going to read direct from the rule book. In this, the final step of the walker phase, if there are currently fewer than three herds in play, Take the kill zone template and check groups of five or more walkers currently in play. If five walkers fit wholly or partially beneath the template, they become a herd. Prone walkers do not count, but activated and engaged walkers are eligible. No more than one herd can be created in each walker phase. If there are more than one eligible group of walkers, the player with initiative chooses. There may never be more than three herds in play simultaneously unless the scenario specifically allows it. What that basically means is we create herds at the end of the walker phase. Now herds are nasty. Just to give you a little bit of an insight on what to expect with these guys, they have 10 red dice for attacks, they also have 10 health points. But that's not all. You do some damage to a herd, you think you're whittling it away. When that herd moves and crosses paths with another walker, it absorbs that walker in and increases its health pool. Number 5 is list building. Though there's been a lot of changes to the Walking Dead All Out War and Walking Dead Call to Arms, one of the biggest changes that people need to understand is this is a much more streamlined and balanced version of the game, which focuses more on player versus player engagement than it does with the randomness of walkers. The biggest change, in my opinion, has, been, has come in the way of list building. There are now three specific alignments, lawful, ruthless and neutral. It goes without saying that lawful characters cannot mix with ruthless characters and neutral can mix with both. Within those three specific alignments, you will find, as you are familiar with in All Out War, your crew specifics, such as the Atlantic Camp, the Prisoners, the Kingdom, the Saviors, and so on. There are many subdivisions within it, such as Bruisers, Tacticians, and whatnot, and these again form part of the list building. So there's a lot of things that you have to take into consideration when building lists in the Walking Dead Call to Arms. That pretty much brings us to an end of the five big changes between Walking Dead All Out War and Walking Dead Call to Arms. Other than that, there are a few notable mentions, such as headshots in defence, eligibility of walkers, and the removal of supply cards. I'm not going to go into that, I'm going to let you guys discover that yourself in the Call to Arms rulebook. All in all, Walk Dead Call to Arms is a much more balanced game than All Out War is, 
and a lot of the randomness of all our war has been removed from it. Whether that works is yet to be seen, but I'm sure you'll see some battle reports on TNG Productions' YouTube channel. If you do wish to pre-order Call to Arms, it is available now. There is a link in the description below. I've been Paul from TNG Productions, and I'm sure I'll see you all at Conflict 2019. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching our content, it means the world to us. If you'd like to see some more videos, they should be over here. And if you'd like to support our channel, keep these lights on. You can find links to our Patreon and merchandise in the description below. See you later.